I mentioned that fourth quarter. Let's take a look at that late fourth quarter execution and some of those plays. And Jason Tatum, a part of plenty of these plays right here. And, man, just take me through this. I mean, usually we don't see Jason Tatum attacking late in the fourth quarter when the game is on the line. How differently did Jason Tatum look tonight? Yeah, I'd love to see that because the Celtics are a three-point shooting team. They only had about 28 points in the paint. There was two of them there. And seeing Tatum go to the free throw line down the stretch was great. Shot 10 free throws in this game, made nine of them. That has to be an integral part of his game moving forward. But I love how assertive he was, not settling for contested jump shots, not settling for three-point shots, taking it in. Look, that's not an assist to a Kristaps Porzingis, but it's effectively that. He drew the defense to him, allowed Porzingis to get an open opportunity for a putback. I thought Jason Tatum had a phenomenal finish to this game tonight. Eddie, how does that change things for the Celtics when Jason Tatum is on the attack and not settling for those threes? Well, in this particular the game, yeah. it was Malik Beasley guarding him. So if he didn't take him to the basket and, and he started settling for jumpers, then, you know, there should be a problem. So it tells me that the team is connected. The coaching staff had, and the, the game plan and, and the scouting report, Jason Tatum is paying attention to that, understands who's in front of him. Might be different if there was a Bobby Portis on him. He might be deferring that basketball. If it was somebody different, Jay Crowder, he might defer that. But knowing that it's Malik Beasley, what did he do? I'm attacking Malik, Malik Beasley. I'm going right, then I'm going getting to my left. I'm going to make him move. I'm going to make him defend. And not just I'm just going straight at him. I'm going to make him defend, get lateral. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He's going to have to with, He's going to slide his feet one way. I'm going to slide his feet the other way. I'm going to get to where I want to get. I got size on him. So that recognition right there to me, that, that, that's the level of maturity that we're seeing from Jason Tatum. Like, it's the small things that I pay attention to in the basketball game. I, we can look at these numbers, and everybody can try to break down these numbers. But within the game, that's the game that's within the game, yeah. I see those things. And, I mean, he did a fantastic job of taking advantage of all of those highlights was against Malik Beasley. Can you just put a, just put a button on the Jason Tatum game tonight? There's this narrative that has become – part of the discussion lately that the Celtics' biggest weakness is can Jason Tatum close games in the fourth quarter? I've seen that a lot over the last couple of games. I don't exactly know where it comes from. I know there are statistics that back that up to a degree, but did I fall asleep last year when Jason Tatum had that big fourth quarter against Philadelphia? Did I imagine the 50-point game in Game 7 last year against the 76ers. What about the year before that when he had 46 against Giannis and against Milwaukee? And the three wins the Celtics had against Miami, Jason Tatum scored 80-plus points in those games. And in Game 7, I'm convinced Jason would have had a monster game if he didn't get hurt on the very first play of it. Look, as a writer, I can tell you, you can always find statistics to back up a narrative. Mm. I am not worried about Jason Tatum closing games. Eight points in the final two minutes and six seconds tonight of a close game against a contender. That is the definition of being a closer. Can I say this, too? It, you know, your friend, my friend, Colin Cowherd, right? Yes. He has something to say about that. Everybody wants to see the star player make the shot at yeah. the end. I don't think we have a team to where we need Jason Tatum to take that shot. Mm -hmm. I think – Jalen Brown can step up and make a shot and make plays. I think Porzingis can step up. I think Derek White can do it. I think Peyton Pritchard, if he's on the court, he can do it. I mean, Al Horford, he can do it. So, to me, like, like that narrative that everybody is trying to portray and paint out there that, oh, Jason Tatum needs to be the guy. No, that's not it. Was Kerr the guy when he knocked down the shot? Michael Jordan deferred to him. Was Paxson the guy? No, Michael Jordan deferred to him. So at the end of the day, it's about winning and making winning plays, and that's what Jason Tatum does. So the narrative that's being painted out there because he takes a shot or misses a shot, I mean, it's, guys are going to make or miss shots at the end of the game. And so to, to me, I, I feel like winning plays, no matter what it is, is the most important thing. One of the reasons this team has been so successful this year is that Jason Tatum has taken a step back, mm -hmm. a little bit of a step back, and allowed his teammates to be more offensively, not going for 30-plus every single night. We, we cannot be fixated on the superstar needing to go one-on-three to prove himself that he's a superstar, to prove himself that he's a fourth-quarter scorer. Jason Tatum, for the majority of this season, has made the right plays every single time. And in the playoffs, that's exactly what they want him to do. When he's got Malik Beasley on him, you go at him. If you've got Very. a double team coming at you, you throw the ball to somebody else because you've got like seven guys on that team that can shoot it, and you want to put the ball in their hands for open looks.